Arms of Morpheus, Implant, by John Christopher Thomas. Act 1. Interior, Dr. Smith's office, day. In session, warm lights. Zachary listens to his patient, Grace Dormuth, 28. Her piercing black eyes focus upwards, a thoughtful fashion model, anxiety issues. Grace tenses up as she speaks. It's the same one, the, the grass, the plants. The tree? But this time, um, the, this, this time. That's all right. Slow down. Something human is there. Exterior, park, night. Flashback. Barely visible in the darkness, Grace ambles alone in a wooded area. Silvery moonlight, shadows, mist, cold like death. I walk up the path as I always do. Can you remember your surroundings? Not really. I think it was the same as before, but now... She halts, spellbound, as if being summoned. You see it again? It's still there, but there's a... A large, bare tree. A silhouette, the gnarled limbs hang low. She approaches, mesmerized. Moonlight flourishes through the branches. She edges closer. The limbs loom larger. Shadows stretch. Severed arms dangle where the branches would be. A muffled, high-pitched cry swells. Hand pressed against her mouth, she realizes the cry is her own scream. End flashback. Interior, Dr. Smith's office. Dr. Zachary Smith rises silently, brows furrowed. It ends there? She nods, turtles and squirms. Crazy, isn't it? No, no, it's not. This might be good. A and another thing, something else. Trudy got another cat. Nice of you to be concerned with Mrs. Kelly, but... I know, I know. What? To not allow my friend's lives to act as a diversion, right? Zachary smiles. Okay, and I'm glad you're keeping up on your journey. We'll recap next week. Okay. She slinks to the exit and spins around at the door. Fifteen cats. Billy, really, that's too many, right? Zachary chuckles. Too many. Next week, enjoy your trip. Grace smirks as she closes the door behind her. Zachary types in notes and waits. A still pause, a buzz. His secretary, Mrs. Angelica Angie Fine, twenties, is heard. Mrs. Smith is here. Thanks, Angie. Samantha Smith, forties, Zachary's wife, strolls in. She's distracted, emptiness, no joy. She nods hello and gestures to the chessboard. And the game again. Afraid so. You ready? Mm hmm. She called. Sounds fine. Um, I'll be getting there by six. It seems darker every time I come here. The eyes, you know. It's better for the patients. We. Sure, I know. She says hello, by the way. I'm glad she's feeling better. Give her my best. It's cold in here, too. Why not open the shades? We used to enjoy the birds, the trees. Samantha jolts closer and drops an unsealed envelope on Zachary's desk, a metallic jingle inside. Just some reminders. I better go. Bye. Zachary moves closer for a kiss. She shifts so it lands as a peck on the cheek. A glance at her watch. She rushes out. Goodbye. The envelope reveals keys as he pulls out a page. Large letters read, I'm sorry, Zachary. We're done. I really tried. Do not contact me. Goodbye, Sam. He slumps back into his chair, staring at a P.A. Mondrian tree painting on his wall, its branches growing larger. Interior hallway, night, barren and echoing, harsh fluorescence. Calvin is on the phone, on the go. Mia, I'm pretty sure he's near, uh, yes, Zachary's dependable that way. I'll be there soon, okay? Bye. He hangs up, ringtone. He pauses with a deep breath and answers the other call. Hello? Who is this? You want the device? My life? Maybe the police might like to hear your threat. Hello? Hello? Again, he hangs up, phone in pocket. His swift gait resumes. Interior, warehouse, night. Industrial yet clean. Laptops and tablets, no windows. The intense Dr. Mia Kim, 30s, neuroscientist, and Calvin's close colleague projects a serene exterior, peering up from her tablet, she nods hello and scrutinizes him. Jeffrey's out. When's he back? Tomorrow. Mia returns to her tablet. Images are looking better. They should be better by now. How many days has it been? The time's not important. They're better. What's wrong? Someone called again. We're probably being watched. They gave me less than a week or... He gestures with his forefinger as he checks Mia's tablet. 
Well, didn't want to hear that. Should we close shop again? Can't. They'd know for sure. Now it's impossible for them to realize how deep we've gotten. No way for them to hack in, but... Phase six? Now? Afraid so. Jeffrey needs to contact the rest of the Dreamers. It's a bit too soon, don't you think? No choice, really. Phase five, at 95%. Closer to 100, but we haven't completed the trials. And Zachary, he's still not in. Well, there's you and I, of course. Jeffrey has some keys. Now it's imperative to bring Zachary in. Mia stands and stretches. You don't like it. It's not that. The contingency plan is solid, but it still could be dangerous. Expanding this quickly? Again, no choice now. And Zachary seems a bit cold, distant. At least we're risking this with the person I trust. Zachary's the one we need. End scene.